to show you how to properly configure a Shield Tech Security Seton camera. This is just one model of our Seton cameras. Uh, they all are configured the same way. And so what you're going to do is first go ahead and plug in the Ethernet cord and then plug in the power. Uh, if uh, you have a wireless adapter, a Vonetz card, then you simply connect the Ethernet port and the power adapter through the Vonetz card. Uh, and then it will be wireless. And of course you can always add one of those later if you need it to be wireless. But in this demonstration I'm going to use the wired portion. If you need help setting up the wireless card, I have a separate video to show you how to do that. Alright, in this example we're using a standard Linksys router. Um, on the back of the router there are four ports for devices. They're labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. And though there's one wire all by itself, you're not going to use the one that's all by itself. That one goes to your um, cable modem. So you're going to use one of the four that are meant for devices. And it's plugged in port one. And you can see here, one is lit up, so we know it's working, which is great. Uh, this router, it's, this is the same way that you're going to set up a Comcast router or Fios router, Verizon, uh, Xfinity, Time Warner, Cox. AT&T, they're all the same, uh, even the Netgear routers, uh, same type of configuration. So now we're going to go to the computer. On the computer you need to download our UC camera app. So download the UC camera app, I have it right here on the desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and open it to install it. it. Comes up, do you want to allow this program to run? Click yes. Uh, choose English, and then uh, next, where do you want to install it? That's fine. Click install. Now, before I do this, I'm just going to point out there's going to be three uh, errors on my screen. That's because I'm running the screenshot software, so that to make this video, I have to be recording it, and it uses some of the same files. So you will not get those errors on your screen. If you do, just click ignore. But um, anyway, click install. This is one error. That's the second error. You won't get those. And here's the third one, but you won't get that one either. If you do, just click ignore. On this screen, make sure that the run auto configuration guide is not checked. So make sure the check is not in there and then click finished. You'll see that it put an icon on your desktop called UC. Go ahead and run that program. Just double click it. Comes up, do you want to run this? Yes. Now if your virus software pops up and says that it needs to scan it. It may take 10 to 15 seconds to scan. I assure you that this program is safe um, and you can just ignore the virus software. If for some reason it blocks it, you need to turn off your virus software temporarily to have this installed and make it an exception. Okay, for the login and password, the login is admin. And this is the a separate login for this program than your camera. But uh, admin is the username. If the password's saved already, you can just click login. If it's not, the default password is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm saving the password so I don't ever have to type this in. But if you want to type it in every time, you can always uncheck the save password. All right, go ahead and click login. Now on this screen, it's going to search for devices. Please wait. It's going to automatically locate all your cameras that you have plugged in. It's saying there are different network segments of devices. Uh, modify this device's IP. Now, hopefully, your camera will already be set up for your network, but if it's not, it prompts you. Simply click yes. Yes, I would like it to change it. So it's going to modify the device's IP. Once it does that, it's going to research for the device. and then it will show up here on the left. So here's the camera. Now there's a little plus sign, so if you don't see it, click the plus, but here it is, and that's great. It is now on our network, uh, but it has an X. Most likely this X is because the login and password need to be set. So all we're gonna do is click Config Management tab at the top, and then go ahead and select the camera over here. So click the IP address and then it populates this field up here. So the login name. If you go back to your camera, 
and look on the Ethernet port here, you'll see it says login and pass for password. So login's administrator and your password's listed there. So on your computer, type in administrator, A-D-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-A-T-O-R. And then the password, you can just delete the asterisk there, and you're going to type in the password that's on the side of your Ethernet port. It may also be in your documentation or on your, your box if you don't see it there. Once you type in this password, click Modify. It says it's successful. And up here at the top, uh, the camera now turned blue, and it may turn to red. Uh, that indicates that the camera is working. Uh, if for some reason it does not do that, then you just need to check your settings manually. And what you'll do for that is uh, you'll click search device down here at the bottom. Okay, and it popped up right here. You have to be very careful with this section. But what you're going to do is go ahead and click it and then put a check in the box. These settings up here can be modified. So let me just make this screen smaller. And to look up your settings, what you're going to do is click your wireless icon by your clock. And here's Linksys. That's my connection. You click your connection. Right click it and go to status. So you're looking for your network. Right click it. Go to status. So that second box pops up. I'm going to just put it over here so you can see everything. And on this box, I'm going to click details. And I'm just going to move it over so you can see the words. And then what I'm going to do is go back to this screen here. And what I'm looking at is it says IP4 default gateway. We're going to make sure the gateway is right. So look on the camera here. It says gateway address. The first set, three sets of numbers must match. So 192, okay, 192, then 168, then 168, then 0, and then 0. And actually for the gateway, it has to be exactly. So, and then 1. So the gateway address is perfect. It must match exactly what it says for gateway. Then for your IP address, we need to go over here and just make sure the first three numbers match the gateway. So the 192.168.0, they match the first three digits, the first three sets of digits for the gateway address. So we're good. And then the last digits, you can make anything you want uh, as long as it's not in use by another device on your network. So this automatically configured it, the 254. You can make it 123, for example, if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going to leave it where it set it because it's working. Then the only other thing you need to check here is your IP4 DNS servers. There should be either one or two listed. In this case, there's two listed, which is 8.8.8.8. And if you look at my DNS1 server, that is correct, 8.8.8.8. So that's working. And then the second one is 10.0.0.1, and that already is correct. But if they were not correct, you would match these numbers to uh, the UC software for the camera. The only one that you have to make sure is different is the actual IP address. So make sure the IP address here, you pick a number that's nowhere on the screen. Like over here, on, I'm just going to point it out. It says IPv4 address 192.168.0.100. That's the IP address of my computer right now. You can't make it the same for the camera because every device has to have it have must have a different IP address. But they are different. It ends in 254, so we're good. So I'm going to head and, go ahead and close this. And <clears throat> I'll make it bigger. One thing to quickly notate is to never click this button here. It says default config. Um, that resets the camera to the factor default, which normally would be okay. However, some of our cameras are using uh, special software to use the cloud service. And when you click that, it loads the default software to the camera and gets rid of the function of the Seton cloud service. So if you lose that function, uh, you'll have to send the camera back to us to flash it. There's no way to do it remotely. And the, uh, we'll know that you click that button because the only way for that feature to disappear completely is by clicking the default config. That is not the case on all of our cameras, but there are select models uh, that do have that problem if you click the default config. So don't click that. If you need to reset the camera to its factor defaults, give us a call or email us. We'll tell you how to do it. Uh, but just don't use this button in this program to do it. And what I'm going to do 
is see if it's working. So let me just move this camera. I put my camera right here and it's just looking at the laptop. So click video view and here it is. Camera's in the, it's right here and you can see it's working great. If you want to make this the camera on the full screen, just simply double click the screen and it'll load up. Um, and if you want to stop it from playing, you just click the stop button. So to play it, just double click it. To stop it, press the stop button. Now we're going to just make sure the camera is online for the cloud access. So click Config Management. It's the tab up here. And then go ahead and click on your camera just one time. So this IP address, click one time. All right, in here, we're going to go to the Network tab. So click Network. And what we're looking for is that login status says either 1 or it says online. So login status must say 1 or online. If it says 0 or offline, then that means one of your numbers are not correct that are listed here. And it's most likely going to be your DNS 1 or your DNS 2. Now, if you, are, if you matched all the numbers, how I just showed you, and it's still not showing online, give us a call. Just let us know who your internet provider is and we will look up what your DNS server is in your area and we'll get that information for you so you can modify it. But this is all working. So you can go in here and change some things like for example, under the time and, time and title. Right now, if you notice on the camera view, it says HDIPCAM. Uh, if you want to change that to say anything you want, for example, uh, my house. You can save that, and then on your video screen, it will now say, my house. Okay, so you can make that say whatever you want. I'm just going to change it to the default one again. Oops. Okay. And that's how you configure it. There's other things you can change in here. Um, some of the settings will not work because they're not compatible with this camera, uh, but a lot of the settings will work. For example, if you want to change how the night vision works, if you want it on uh, by the time of day versus um, when it gets dark out. Sometimes you have spotlights or other outside lighting that might be useful. But that's how you configure it. I'm going to just uh, close out of this program, and it says enter your password to close it. If you don't want it to prompt you for a password to close the program, just put a checkbox here. Um, otherwise, you can type in your one, two, three, four, five, six, and click exit. If you have any questions, please contact our office and we'll walk you through anything that you need. Thank you.